see this. It's a, uh, it's something that'll change the world and human life as we know it. He knows. He's seen the light. When Monty talks, it's painful. <laughs> Monty, you have been so instrumental in uh, kind of pointing me in the right direction. <laughs> it was about um, looking at your character defects and spirituality. Uh, it, it's the integration of clinical practices with uh, the 12 steps. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. Uh, he's got a lot of energy. And sometimes when you don't have so much energy, he picks you up and carries and you. And the Monty man there certainly helps. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. The views expressed on this special broadcast of the Take 12 radio show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Now here's that guy who's getting less popular minute by minute, your host, The Multi Man. Welcome, one and all, to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show, a very special broadcast uh, this week. Uh, This is a segment from the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference. Uh, At our booth is Constance Scharf. She is uh, a a doctor, a PhD in transformative studies, specializing in addiction recovery. She is the Senior Addiction Research Fellow and Director of Addiction Research at Cliffside Malibu Treatment Center and co-author with Richard Tate of the Amazon number one best-selling book, Ending Addiction for Good. Well, Dr. Scharf writes for a variety of publications and speaks worldwide to healing professionals on the science and spirituality of addiction recovery. And from the neuroscience of addiction recovery and depression and trauma as related to addiction to the concepts of vulnerability and hope. She has also traveled extensively in Asia, Africa, and North America, learning how to help individuals evoke life-transforming experiences and use those experiences to heal addictions and trauma. It is my pleasure, it is my honor to present to you Dr. Constance Scharf at the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference. Here is myself interviewing Dr. Scharf. Right now at our table is Constance Scharf. And uh, Constance is uh, is part of an organization that is the main sponsor for this event uh, this year. Uh, she is, uh, well, you're one of these people, right, that got a passion for this thing, right? I do, yes. Yeah, and so Cliffside Malibu is your people. Yeah, Cliffside Malibu is an elite addiction treatment center in uh, Malibu, California. And one of the things that we do uh, that's a little different is um, I am a full-time addiction researcher and uh, I uh, comb through the addiction research that is done in many different fields from psychology to neuroscience to complementary medicine and then bring that information to the rest of the field so that we can continually improve the way addiction is treated. Do you think that we're we're making more headway in the last, let's say, 10 years than we have in the last 20? We really are, because one of the uh, main fields that is providing new research is the field of neuroscience. Right. And we are starting to learn more and more about how the brain works. And as we do that, we are able to match complementary therapies to uh, the way the brain, stru- the structure and function of the brain, mm-hmm. so that we can improve our addiction treatment. One of the things that we hear a lot of people talk about uh, are, are, are the way they describe, for instance, mental illness, mm-hmm. as if the brain was not physical. But the brain's an organ, true? Yes. Okay, so we're talking about the physical body. We're talking about two things. We talk about the physical body because the, there's something called neuroplasticity that we see on TV. Mm-hmm. And we have learned in the last few years that in response to addictive behaviors, in response to doing the same thing over and over again, the brain changes wow. both its structure and its function, both its uh, physical structures and its biochemistry. And uh, having learned that, we are now able to approach addiction treatment in a different way. But that being said, there is this consciousness or spiritual component that 
we think is maybe centered in the brain. Some people have said it's centered in the heart. We don't know how that works. Right, right. You can't. We can't just grab it and no. study it like no. we do. In fact, with an MRI, for instance. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I. So right now we're focusing on the structure and function of the brain, the physicality of the brain. But in June, I'll actually be speaking at a consciousness. Uh, conference in Helsinki to wow. discuss these very issues of what is that spiritual component and how can we help them he uh, people heal that part that is amorphous that we can't pin down and, and it's interesting because uh, right now the pastor at, at the fellowship that I attend is doing a whole series on soul care mm, okay and how the body mind and spirit is engulfed in this this whole thing called the soul and that we that's one of the things that we don't pay too much attention to is is caring for our soul i mean we're, we're so busy we're doing this or that we're we carry for our physical bodies we go on diets we do health food stuff you know we do all this these things even mindfulness centering there's a booth down here that's got discs that that i'm going to pick one up i just love them they i mean i can tell mm -hmm. you know there, there's certain things uh that, that we can do but the soul well, it's a, it's a mystery, right, in, for a lot of people? It really is a mystery as to um, how the soul or the spirit yeah. um, works, how it's damaged, how to heal it, and how it interacts with the psyche, the mind, yeah. the body. Um, we, we really don't know. We really don't know. And so um, it's really been the purview until now of religion. But religion is a is a ritual practice. That's not necessarily mm. spirituality, and it doesn't necessarily heal the wounds that need healing among addicts. Right, right. So, so um, in, in many circles that may be deemed as religious, they're getting it. They're starting to see that you know we need to be concerned about the person, not the structure of the place where you worship. Uh, and we need to to minister to the needs as a person as a whole not just to the rituals they go through and, and that kind of thing so i do you think that's getting better within the faith community i think it is one of the uh trends that i'm seeing i'm jewish and and i've uh been asked to speak at uh, uh jewish theological seminaries wow. to um talk about addiction with um rabbis in training because yeah. they don't get they don't get they it. don't get it they don't understand what addiction is and yet they're going to be facing it a lot in their congregations because rabbis are i'm certain are going to get a lot more questions about addiction than they are about um which foods are kosher and which foods aren't <laughs> you know which yeah, they get a lot of training in it. so pastors priests rabbis spiritual advisors mentors uh that we have in our lives so oftentimes don't understand this stuff right uh and it's kind of like uh well if you just had enough faith or you just love god more or you just got up a little earlier and did your devotionals you know a little more seriously but that's really not the solution is it well it isn't the solution and i think i think a lot of spiritual advisors and spiritual teachers uh, just sort of throw their hands up because they don't know what yeah. to do because there are a lot of addicts who are also very religious and very devout Absolutely. and have that faith yeah. and yet still aren't sober and so you know yep. what do you do you know that's a conundrum for any right. for anybody in what's pastoral wrong with care. me what's wrong with me i tr i just love god with all my heart soul and strength and yet i keep drinking that's right yeah yeah and so so, so what you're doing is is so vitally important now you are the keynote speaker for tonight yes okay give us a little hint of what you're going to be talking about well I'm scheduled to talk about the uh, latest research in addiction treatment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we'll talk a little bit about acupuncture and we'll talk about EMDR oh, and we'll okay. talk about um, positive psychology and a few other things. But really, the purpose of my speech is to inspire people because, you know, addiction is a terribly difficult field. Addicts and their families aren't always that nice to work with. <laughs> addicts don't tend to be very compliant people that we care about die you know they yeah. don't get it yeah and so you know i want people to be inspired that there are new therapies out there that we can add to what they're already doing to improve treatment outcomes and that's really what i'm about being here is, is trying to inspire the people that, who that get so, my talk that is so great because because even when you go 
back to the founders of the mothership, you right? Know, Alcoholics Anonymous, right? You know, the authors are talking about in the future, perhaps dot dot dot. Yes, and we forget that we do. And you know, one of the things that uh, Bill and Bob um, were were known to talk about, and it's in it's all throughout uh, the big book, is that we should seek outside help. Right. That that uh, twelve step programs, wonderful as they are, really aren't the only or aren't treatment in and of themselves if no. we need help with our bodies we should seek doctors if we need help with our minds we should seek psychologists mm-hmm. if we need help with our spirits we should seek cl- the clergy of our tradition and so this is really you know um you know addiction treatment 2.0 or 3.0 right is is the next stage of what can we do we know we have things that work a little bit yeah and that work with some people but right. what can we do to reach more people and provide more therapies so that more people can recover? And that's what we'll be talking about this evening. Sometimes I think people are afraid. I mean, it, people oh, yes. people can be very protective of their 12-step fellowship because, Absolutely. because it saved their lives. And so sometimes maybe a little o- too overly protective. You know, I said something in the meeting hall uh, earlier today. I said anonymity does not mean secrecy. Yes. And and we've been hiding in the basements of our churches and meeting halls, afraid to say anything because we have misunderstood what anonymity is. Mm-hmm. And uh, therefore, Take Pro Radio was birthed, and I, I get the mail, believe me. You know, you're breaking tradition. I go, we're not affiliated. How can we break a tradition? That's right. <laughs> we're not affiliated. Uh, but I, th- I think maybe because of some of the fear and the overprotectiveness that people don't want to... Um, be open to maybe modifying something or changing or even simply adding to, right? Absolutely. You know, when I uh, wrote Ending Addiction for Good, which is uh, uh, available on Amazon.com with the co-founder or the founder, uh, my co-author is the founder of uh, Cliffside Malibu, um, we expected to get pushback from the medical community. Um, And what we found was that we got tremendous support from, from the, the medical, medical community, community because they said we don't know what to do yeah. where we got the pushback was from 12 step really program isn't that interesting saying this was good enough for me i don't know why someone else can't get it and uh you know that was never the intention no of alcoholics anonymous you know right. Bill W. was very involved um, in many different types of psychological research. Oh, you bet. You know, and so he knew that people needed different kinds of support. And, uh, you know, we have nothing but good things to say about 12-step programs. We use 12-step programs um, at Cliffside Malibu. About half of our people um, enjoy them and participate in them. You know, they're free. They're everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. They're... uh, you know, easy to access. You can get someone who gets it any time of the day or night. I mean, 12-step programs are wonderful, but most people, especially early in sobriety, need more. And yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that, too, this evening. I think, I think where the confusion comes in, and you could tell somebody who is, is, has never cracked the big book open. Because, <laughs> yes. Because they'll say, you know, I have been in this program for so many, I'm going to know, you've been in the fellowship. Correct. But you haven't been in the program, because I can tell by the way you're talking. Correct. Not to put you down, but, you know, it's just not, it's not the directions. Well, and what the, and, and. The Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, as you said, is one thing, or any other 12-step program is one thing. The program itself, which is what is outlined in the big book, is meant to heal relationships Mm -hmm. so that addicts can move on. Right. Right. And live in the world with their families, with their friends, with their employers in a healthy way. That's the goal of that. And you know what? It does that in very significant ways. But if you have, like I work with war veterans very often, if you have PTSD, the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous do not address that. They don't. And so what do you do for that? You need outside help. And that's what these other therapies are about. So there is nothing wrong with going to AA and a psychotherapist and an acupuncturist and having a personal trainer. None of those things are exclusion, as exclusionary of the other. I think sometimes we want to solve the world's problems, but then we want to say the world's problems are an outside issue. Well, you, you can't have it both ways. Correct. You know, I mean, when I sponsor people, um, I go through the book. 
and I, I show, tell them that there's no power in the steps. The steps are there to show you your need for a power. Why would you seek one if you didn't know you needed one? And the steps will do that. But once we've gotten to that point, then then if they if they uh, have a certain faith or they come from a certain background, I encourage them. You need to now move into this area and develop that relationship, and 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 then you'll grow. But you're not going to do it by going to meetings. That's exactly right. You know, just like you're not going to get saved by going to church or a relationship <laughs> with God by going to synagogue, right? Just going isn't going to be the thing that's sufficient enough for you. To recover exactly yeah and i just i just i, I think we we've kind of lost that a little bit along the way so i'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing and, and i do think we're reeling people back in a little bit by doing this stuff but we've got to remain open uh to to the evolution of addiction treatment we do and uh, you know especially people who sponsor you know we need to know the limits of that relationship yeah you know my sponsor is there to take me through the steps and to help me when i have problems related to alcoholism my sponsor is not there to be my therapist is not there to be my banker is not there to give right. me you know any sort of advice really about those outside issues in my life but she can point me in the direction of professionals who can help yeah, me you bet you bet okay so your book Ending Addiction for Good. Ending Addiction for Good. You're going to be doing a book signing. I am directly following uh, the presentation. Right, right. So so what has been your feedback so far on your book? Uh, it actually just won um, Best Self-Help Addiction Book in Texas from the Texas Authors Association. Wow, so, um, that's huge. It was a number one uh, bestseller on Amazon. Um, we've been getting tremendously positive feedback yeah. um, about the book because our goal in writing the book was to give away the information that we have found out about addiction treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, Cliffside Malibu now has, oh, I think probably between 60 and 70 beds, somewhere in that range, because um, we've been expanding. When we wrote the book, we had 18 two right. years ago. Um, but that's, you know, there are, you know, 30 million addicts in the United States alone. We can't do the job by ourselves. No. And so we want everyone who works with addicts to know what the latest research is. The book went into second edition um, this last year. And uh, we're really proud of that. We updated the science in it. We updated the neuroscience um, because we want people to have the most recent information that they can have. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, so in closing, let's talk just a few minutes here about Cliffside Malibu. Sure. Where they're located. Uh, what is their core principles, and are they a 12-step based model? No. What, what? No. Okay. Cliffside Malibu is located in Malibu, California, on the north side of Malibu towards... Uh, Not Zuma. an ugly place. Not an ugly place. <laughs> no, no. At Cliffside, we have 180-degree white water, uh, white cap views of the Pacific Ocean. It's a right. beautiful place. Right. Um, it is um, an elite treatment center um, that uh, has uh, usually uh, a large number of... Uh, CEOs, um, celebrities, uh, s people in sports. So, so okay. pe it's, a, it's, an ex it's a high end, it's an expensive treatment center right. um, that really focuses on privacy because of the kinds of Because of the clients that are there. Because okay. of the clientele gotcha. that we have. Um, yeah. And uh, our, our treatment principle is holistic. So we, ha we use the Stages of Change by Dr. Prochaska. Um, he endorsed actually Ending Addiction for Good. And uh, intensive one-on-one -on -one psychotherapy coupled with whole health therapies. Massage, acupuncture, yoga, et cetera, and Nutrition. so forth. Nutrition. Yeah. We have chefs that cook everything. I'd love to hear that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, very... Uh, well, I'll actually be talking about... Um, that we that uh, we're trying to get treatment centers to move away from the buffet plan of sobriety, which is what yeah. I used <laughs> to get yeah. sober. Um, you know, to switch you know one thing for another, and the next thing you know, poof, you're a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so uh, we really look at how we can rewire the brain so that people are able to make healthy decisions. Yeah. That's really what addiction recovery is all about. We are not a 12-step based program, but we do include 12 steps in our treatment model. Everybody's introduced to it because, you know, it, it works for a lot of people and a lot of people don't have the support system that the fellowship creates. So we, uh, right. about half of our people use it. Sure, sure. Okay, you, you said something about, about cost and it is being very expensive. It's $58,000 a month for a shared room. 
I've heard more expensive prices from there places. There are many more expensive yeah. places than yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. But and, it does yeah. it does mean that not everybody can attend. We have sure. just opened um, a new what we call affordable treatment center that's uh, twenty five thousand a month. So that we're on par with the with the average price. That's about an average twenty five thirty, right? Yeah. 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 And and we did that. So you, with that treatment center, we don't have the focus on privacy. If you don't need it, why pay for it? Right. You know. Right. Um, you know, we don't have 16 steps of security to get there. It's normal security that you would see at a treatment center. And then also, um, you know, we have wonderful cooks but are not, you know, traditionally trained mm-hmm. chefs mm-hmm. and different ways that mm-hmm. we, we can cut costs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. at Cliffside Malibu, you're paying for the bells and whistles. You're paying for Netflix in your room. You're paying for turndown service. You're paying for a weekly massage. Those things are all wonderful, but they're not requirements of treatment. R- right, but... To the people that are listening right now that are saying, oh, please. You, you know what I mean? Because there's people that say, you know, this thing is so luxurious and all this stuff. Do they really deserve that? The, the loser drug addicts. The, you know what I mean? That mentality. And I, they're it, not loser drug no, addicts. No, but I hear that. You, I, we you do. Know. We do all the time. But if that's a, that's a person's background, right? If they've lived with maid service, if they've lived on the high end, um, they won't come to treatment if they don't have that. No, they won't. And the whole idea is to save lives, right? Exactly right. So turn down their pillow. Give them a mint for crying out loud. It's great. We have a we have a saying. At, the sugarless mint. <laughs> <laughs> we have a saying um, that we use at Cliffside that we're um, we're trying to get rid of the efforts, right? Yeah. Effort, I'm leaving. Effort, I don't like it. Yeah. Effort, yeah. I'm out the door. Yeah. Right? We don't give you any reason. To say effort, right? Yeah. We say, oh, you know, oh, I mean, it, it couldn't, it couldn't be more luxurious. And that way, you can focus on your recovery, you can focus on your treatment, and you can do what you need to do to get better. And these are people who, you know, have the means, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> and are very influential in terms of getting other people into recovery there and being go. good examples. There you go. You know, if you have an A-list celebrity who goes out and is sober for two or three years and is getting those big gigs and mm-hmm. is, you know, and says, hey, I'm sober, you can be too. Right. You know, what do we lose? How many lives do we lose through that spider web of connections yeah. if we don't get yeah. him sober in the first place? Yeah. I love it. Good job. Good Thank job. you. Congratulations. Thank you so for, much. For, for the work you're doing. I think that's incredible. Well, there you have it, my friends. A very special broadcast this week uh, on Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. We are broadcasting from the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference uh, uh, during that interview. And I'm coming to you now from our studios at KHLT Recovery Broadcasting in Albany, Oregon. Don't forget to tune into all of our shows. Give us an email here at Take12Radio.com. And please remember, do something right now that will make the person you will be tomorrow proud to have been the person you are today. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, and I'm wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 kitty.